and welcome to another Mithruna Monday video where I dive into some topic related to Mithruna. Today we're going to be discussing world generation, the progress indications, and maps. So first we're going to start a new single player world. In this screen you can see previous worlds you've started and sort of the preview screen, the preview map from when the world was generated. We're going to create a new one today. Call it Mithruna Monday. You give your world a name, um, leave it at the default fractal, and give it some random seed, or you put in whatever value you want there. And you can hit preview, and it will generate you know, sort of what the world looks like. And you can pick different seeds and kind of see what the overview looks like. This is a really large area, and so it kind of gives you an overview of kind of what the world will be like around there. So let's go ahead and generate that. That will create the sort of basic world data structures and get us to the point where we can create a character. All right, so from here, we create a character as we've seen in other Mithruna videos. So we'll just create a human, we'll select human female, we'll leave the defaults for everything, we'll give her a, um, a name. Okay, save and continue, and we'll go ahead and play the world. Now this initial phase, it's generating a lot of, you know, far away sort of continents, towns, and, and things like that. So it takes a little while the first time coming into the game. And you'll see these sort of messages plop through as they go. Gives you something to read while it's processing. telling you all these things. Um, yeah, here we go. And so now we enter the world. So it starts you out in the spawn tower and the world will start sort of uh, paging in around you. Um, from here you can kind of look around and see what's happening, but it takes a little while. In the lower right corner of the screen uh, there's some progress indicators about generating the far terrain uh, low L LOD low level of detail um, it's generating the far terrain for the very first time and so that'll give you an indication that the world is kind of busy right now as it generates that far terrain you'll see the far tiles come in now we can actually start walking around immediately um, in this local area because it's already got that generated the game will be a little sluggish while it loads in that far data. That's nice. We have a cave right next to us. So in here, you can, uh, if you hit M to bring up the map, or you can hit Tab to bring up this menu and click Map. You know, so our M will bring up the map directly. And it will show you where you are in the world and kind of as the tiles, as the far tiles generate, they'll come in. And so usually, um, if you want to just watch the map come in, and then you know that the far train is mostly generated and then you can walk around without sort of the lag that happens sometimes. But you can see it's still generating far terrain. It's got the terrain generated. It's generating you know, trees and towns and things beyond what this map shows. Um, so the, in the map, you can mouse wheel to zoom in. That'll show you where you are. You know, there's various map markers you can see. Um, currently, uh, these kind of little blips are indications that caves have gone down to the point where they've filled with water. Usually those little blips are water-filled caves. Um, you can see where the nearby towns are, which you could also probably see on the map if we... Yeah, so there's a town over there. Off in the distance you can kind of see it. looks cool. Um, and that would be this town over here. If we look a little bit to the left, uh, this mountain... This peak is in the way. Um, we may both fly up and see. Yeah, currently you can still fly. Um, yes, yeah, so that town, that other town is is sort of too close to the mountain. We can't see it over this little hill here. So if we fly over, we might be able to see it. Yeah, there it is, real close. 
Um, that's the idea of the game, is that when you spawn into the spawn tower, there should be at least one town within reasonable walk, and there'll eventually be a road from the spawn tower to that town. That way, when you start out in the world the first time, you can gear up. Uh, from this view, you can actually you know, zoom out to here, which is like sort of a 16 square kilometers, almost. Mithruna kilometers. Um, I call them Mithruna kilometers because they're only, they're 1,024 meters instead of 1,000 meters, these squares. And you can turn on and off different markers if you don't want to see them. Now currently there's a marker sheet that you can turn on that will load all of the various generated points of interest. And so if you zoom in you can see sort of interesting things to find. And yeah, there's the cave system we saw. There's a you know, sort of the random generator calls these different things. There's a cliff point of interest, which means a point of interest that would appear on cliff sides. So if we want to go look at that, we can kind of drill in. It's useful. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, it's useful for debugging things mostly. I think that's that's it right there. So I'm gonna I'm a super fast fly over there. Um. You'll notice as you walk around that event sometimes the uh, progress indicator will pop up again in the lower right, and that means that you've gone far enough that it's generating more terrain. I don't know if we'll so bring up the map again. Yeah, if we cross this line, it should start generating the next line farther than that. So if we cross all the way past this ruins over here, which is... Uh, cliffside ruins. Yeah, that's what these are. Some old altar that's been, uh... So if we cross the eyes, so in the lower right you can see it's generating the next line of... If we zoomed out, it's ge generating that next line on the right as it comes in. Because we just crossed that line, so it's generating that stuff over there. Um... Yeah, so again, once you're, once you're in here, you can turn off any of these things. As you drill in, it'll show you actually which ones are visible and which ones aren't. So you can turn off, like if you decide you don't want to look at any of the cliff poise or you only want to look at cliff poise, you can turn all the other things off. But this is a way of sort of finding your way around and um, exploring the map a little bit. Uh, again, I will stress that town placement, what goes into a town, all of these things are completely random at the moment. There's no sort of rhyme or reason. And that will change. Uh, that's a uh, he heavy set of development that's coming soon. Um, and so you could plop down here and you, it will be in a uh, conifer forest. So this must be relatively cold, relatively cold terrain here. And we can uh, just fly over the trees. Yeah, so it's snowy. Uh, pine trees, and then we can go fly over to this town. But town, where the towns appear and the buildings are completely random at the moment. Let's see if we can... Looks like there might be a cave system right here. In a future Mon Mithruna Monday video, I'll go exploring some cave systems. Maybe this would be a decent world to do it in. Yeah, see, I'm I'm flying faster than the world can generate. Um, I recommend not doing that, but it doesn't doesn't cause a problem. Yeah, that's a that's going to be a cool cave system too. So in a future Mithruna Monday video, we will explore that cave right there. Um, but I wanted to get to this town to talk about. So yes, towns are completely random at the moment. It makes sure there's some sort of minimum requirements and that that doesn't build towns right on the side of cliffs. B yeah, because I'm flying super fast, you know, I'm, I'm going ahead of the, the uh, terrain generation. You can also occasionally see my avatar f plop in there. So there we go. So if we uh, start walking at a more normal speed, the terrain generation will be a little happier. And so this is a town. Most towns this size will have, you know, an airport and some temples and cemeteries and things. Um, 
there's sort of minimum requirements, but there's no rhyme or reason to how the buildings are placed or rotated. Um, it just, it's just placed. And so that is the world generation, world progress, and maps. Thanks for watching this Mithruna Monday video. Like, comment, subscribe. If you have ideas for future Mithruna Monday videos, please leave them in a comment. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.